Josie Smith's been picking flowers for a new teacher on Mr. Scowcroft's allotment, and now she's going to be late for school. And she's left her coat behind. And the apple for Miss Valentine. just been polished. Excuse me, Miss Valentine. What's your mother thinking of sending you to school at this time? And in this state, you're wet through. Where's your coat? I don't know. Doesn't your mother know any better than to send you out without a coat in this weather? Where's your handkerchief? I don't know. And what's all that rubbish in your hands? Throw it in the waste paper basket. All over my clean floor. She'll take me all day to wash and polish after her. Come here to me. Show me your hands. Now go and wash them, and your face as well, and take those filthy Wellingtons off and put your gym shoes on. Now if any child comes to school late again, there's going to be trouble. Gary Grimes, blow your nose. What have I told you about bringing a handkerchief to school? All of you. And what's this? That's the second book that's got torn in this class this week. Books cost money. Now, if any more books get torn in this class, I'm having your parents in. Is that understood? Yes, Miss Potts. Thank you, Miss Valentine. All right, children, get on with your work. your name? Josie Smith. All right, Josie, go to your place. It's your work, Josie. You get on your back. Sometimes school's horrible. Josie Smith's the best in the class at reading and writing, but she can't do sums. How can you take ten away from three? You can't. How can you? It's too big. She's taking the three away from the ten. I don't think that can be right. You've copied them down wrong. You're supposed to add up, not take away. And you're not borrowing a pencil with a rubber on the end because you didn't want to school with me. Sometimes school's really horrible when you have to do sums instead of stories and you've lost your coat and it's raining and your best friend's fallen out with you and won't lend you her rubber and you think it'll never be time to go home. Josie Smith's had a horrible day. She was late for school, Eileen still isn't speaking to her, and she can't remember where she left her coat. I hope she hasn't caught a cold. I'm sorry, dudes. We've lost Nelly the Elephant and Toucan Tex. No joy there. But we've got uh, Teabag and Count Dracula, but right now it's Josie, Josie Smith. Smith.
Josie Smith had a horrible day at school yesterday. And now it's morning. Time to go to school again. Is she ready? She's to stay in bed today, Eileen. She's got a bad cold. Oh, bye, then. <laughs> bye, Eileen. Your bread. I don't feel hungry. I'm glad I had to stay in bed today because I don't like school anymore. Why is that? You haven't been getting in trouble, have you? No. Well, what's the matter then? Eileen wouldn't let me borrow her pencil with the rubber on the end and I had to rub out with my finger and it made a hole. And is that all? And I didn't like my dinner. All right. Now settle down. Have you remembered where you left your coat yet? No. Well, I suppose you must have left it at school. Go to sleep now. Achoo! Achoo! Josie Smith and Ginger stayed in bed all morning, and in the afternoon, they got up. I'll just slip across to Mrs Chadwick's and get something for our tea. Can I go? You stay where you are. It's raining. You can watch me from the window. Oh, no. It's Mrs. Scowcroft. And she's got Josie's coat. I've been hearing some stories about you. Look what Mrs. Scowcroft gave me. Is it my coat? Your coat and your apple and your handkerchief and something else. Oh! That's to say thank you to you. It seems Mr. Scowcroft's got a bad cold like you and he couldn't go and feed his hens yesterday. And when Mrs. Scowcroft went to feed them, she said you'd done it for him already. I did some digging as well. And weren't you late for school? A bit. So that's it. You got in trouble for being late and that's why you don't like school anymore. Is that it? I don't know. Can I take the flowers to school for Miss Valentine? If you like. Why don't you do her a nice story in a picture as well? OK. So she did. And the next day, when she went to school, she had a note to say she'd been ill and a bunch of dahlias, and a story for Miss Valentine. And when Miss Valentine had read Josie Smith's story, she said... All right, everybody, put down your things and listen to me. Josie Smith, stand up. Now, Josie doesn't know, but yesterday, when she was ill, we had a competition to see who could write the best story. Well, Josie brought me a story from home, and it's the best one of all, so she gets the prize. And one day, you'll be just as good at sums, won't you, Josie? Yes, Miss Valentine. Aren't you going to look at your prize? Thank you, Miss Valentine. Look at that. It's just what she wanted. A shiny, stripy, brand-new sharpened pencil with a rubber at the end. David Steele also asked about the Iraqis' reported destruction of Kuwaiti oil fields. I, I am, of course, aware of the media reports of damage to the oil fields, and I've made a number of inquiries up to and including the last few minutes to find out what the present situation is. I must say to the House, as yet, I have no independent evidence to confirm those reports. Some experts believe that Iraq may have a military objective in setting fire to Kuwait's oil facilities. The fires will throw up a huge pool of smoke, creating a gigantic smoke screen. One of the reasons that you could have for setting fire to the refineries and the oil field would reduce thick blankets of smoke, which could then provide some air cover to inhibit air attack. 
Within the last hour, Saudi Arabia has come under renewed attack from Scud missiles. American Patriot missiles have intercepted at least three Iraqi Scud missiles above Dharan. The interceptions took place close to the major American military base in the region. The Allies say they've now flown over 10,000 missions against Iraq, and the military spokesman says they're very encouraged by the results so far. And that's all the news so far. Our next report is in an hour's time. Next this afternoon on HTV Cymru Wales, Children's ITV. Yeah. Right, I'm off. It's Friday night. And don't forget to remind your father that he's picking me up. Okay. Listen, I've got to go. Oh, Mum says to remind Dad. What about? It's Friday night. About being picked up. Oh, yeah. Freezing. I'm starving. We have some chilli. Just bunk in the microwave. Oh, yeah. Message from Mum. Remember it's tonight and tell Dad about being picked up, all right? Just what the doctor ordered. Mum said it would pick you up. Oh, and don't forget tonight's the night. So, tonight's the night then. Hi, I'm Loopy, and I'm simply nutty about new Kellogg's Honey Nut Loops. Golden honey, crunchy nuts, and wholesome oats. All looped together in a new great tasting cereal. Kellogg's Honey Nut Loops. Let's loop. You know, when I was a kid, my mum always ball washed things to get them really white. But you can't with today's clothes, can you? So how can today's mums get close to boil wash white? My little girl, she's got this security blanket and she drags it everywhere. It gets really filthy. Look at it. I really wish I could boil wash, but I can't. It don't up the size of a hanky. Thank goodness for Daz Ultra. It's made all the difference. I don't have to put up those dingy whites anymore. Look, that's a really bright white. Even my mum would be proud of that. So, Wendy, would you swap? Well, I know what you're going to ask me, and the answer is no. Daz Ultra, today's way to get close to boil wash white, at a price that's right. I perhaps. Sir. Adams. Sir. Bartlett. This book. <laughs> Vix Silex with the famous Vix Vapors gives relief in seconds and it lasts for hours. Barton, see me after school. Briggs. What's going to work fast and have a long lasting effect on you, Barton? Silex works in seconds, lasts for hours. Churchill could save you money on your car insurance. Call one of our people now and see how much you could save. You'll be surprised. Call Churchill free on 0800 200 300 for an instant quote, even instant cover. Right? That's right. Free on 0800 200 300. Call Churchill now and see how much you could save. Free on 0800 200 300. Oh, come on, lads. Would you be in France by now? This Channel Tunnel last just boring. Honey, we made it! Bonjour, madame! What have you done to my lawn? This ain't blinking Calais, this is blinking Catford. Here, what's your blinking French? Have some more PG, boys. Oh, I knew that hole would make a lovely pond. You might even get some frogs in here. There's no other tea to beat PG. It's the taste. The brand new B&Q Depot opens on Pentrabat Retail Park, Merthyr Tidville at 10 a.m. this Friday with the biggest range of home improvement and building products in Wales. And there are hundreds of amazing opening offers there too. So whatever you do, make sure you catch it. Jungle today, aren't we, Scully? Well, here we are, four million years before Jan Brown's Wicker. brain appeared. No, no, it's Cyril Attenborough, younger brother oh, wait, of the famous we've Attenborough twins. we got Joseph Smith, Dog Tannion and Children's Ward at 440, but right now it's time for another episode of Josie Smith. Here she is.
Josie Smith's at school. She wasn't late today. Princess was sad. Don't cry, said the jet, for I will never hurt you. We are going to the seaside. We are going in the car. No, 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 Batman. Here is a ball. Play with a ball. Here is Batman. Play with Batman. Trog, quietly. The princess is running back. She is running back to the giant. Are you going to look after me? Can you see the sea? Can you see the waves? No, 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 shouts aloud. Quietly. Josie Smith, come and read to me. I will give you a boat. I will make it for you. Excuse me, Miss Valentine. Now, this child's name is Tahara. I don't know whether she speaks English. She hasn't said a word to me. A new girl for your class. See you look after her. That's Miss Potts, the horrible headmistress. But who's that? She must be a princess. Tahara? Well, Tahara, we better choose somebody to look after you. Can I look after her, Miss Valentine? Well, I suppose you could, but I wanted you to help Gary Grimes with his reading. Eileen can help him today. Can I look after... What's her name? Tahara. Her name's Tahara. Can I look after her? No, I want to. Oh, quiet now. You go on back and sit down in your places. Josie Smith can look after Tahara for today. Eileen, would you help Gary Grimes with his reading? Take Tahara over to your table. Now, quiet, all of you. Settle down. Let's have a look. Tree. That doesn't say a tree. It says mother. Mother. Look. Look. There's a princess. Do you want me to read it to you? Ouch! What did you do that for? Because it's not fair. You're supposed to be helping Gary Grimes with his reading. I am not. I'm supposed to be looking after Tara, Miss Valentine said. Well, she's horrible. She's got horrible black hair. She has not, and it's longer than yours anyway. Well, I don't care, and I'm not playing with you at playtime because you're horrible, so... It's playtime now. Josie Smith doesn't care anyway if Arlene's not playing. She's playing with Tahara. Don't be frightened, because if anyone pushes you off, don't you? I'll knock them down. Come on, let's go for a walk. And at dinner time, you can sit next to me if you want. And after school, you can come to my house and watch television. Come on, the whistle's blowing. We have to go in now. Everybody's drawing. Josie Smith's drawing. But Tahara's not drawing. She's not doing anything. I'm drawing you a picture. Look. Look, it's a picture of you. Tahara. But right now it's time for Josie Smith. <laughs> and she's got a brand new friend, but everyone's a bit jealous. <laughs> What's that? Josie Smith's got a new friend at school. She looks just like a princess. And she's called Tahara. I don't like Tahara. Josie Smith thinks she's really good, but she's horrible. Let's go for a walk. Eileen doesn't like Tahara, but she's just jealous. And at dinner 
and you can see it next to me if you want. Destroy it. Robin, start the Batmobile. Yeah. Rolly Baxter, what have you been told about bringing toys to the table? Batman ate carrots. Oh, he does, does he? Well, Batman had better eat him or Rolly Baxter will get the back of my hand. Destroy this evil person, Batman. You cheeky little monkey. Put that thing in your pocket or I'll have Miss Potts in here and see what she has to say. And who's been spilling the water on the table? Grimes, eh? Gary Grimes. I know her. He did. He spilled when he was making race course. Race course? I'll give you race course. Don't you learn any table manners at your house? He learned that at the chimpanzee's cheek right there. He flicked a carrot at me as well. Well, I'll not have any more of it. I'll have Miss Potts in here. And why aren't you eating anything? It's because she's new. She's my friend. Oh, she hasn't even touched a meat. Perhaps she doesn't like it. Well, she can still eat a bit of it. Don't let me see it still there when I come round again. Who did that? Who dropped that plate? Don't cry. I don't like meat either. My mum gives me a paper bag so I can hide the lumpy bits in. We can hide your meat in it as well if you want. <laughs> But don't be frightened. Where's that new child? Where's the dinner lady for this table? Come here a moment, will you? Now then, this child has not to eat any meat. The vegetarian, her father told me this morning when he brought her. So see that she doesn't eat any meat. Well, it's too late now. I told her to eat it. You see, she's eaten it. Eaten it? Well, what's the father going to say? I told her to eat it. Well, how was I supposed to know? Have you eaten your meat? Meat. Do you understand me? She's eaten it. Well, let's hope her father doesn't find out, that's all. These parents, they think I've got nothing better to do than to stand over the children all day. It's all right. She's gone now. And I'm glad you didn't tell over me. And when we've had our pudding, we can go out and you can play with me all the time. Josie Smith plays with Tahara all the time now. She's not friends with Eileen because Eileen said Tahara was horrible. Well, she's just jealous. Mm. 